he always was the kind of the life of the party, always like talking to people, making jokes, um, just listening to people, just always got along with everybody. He was kind of a connector. Definitely smart and funny, but as in, he was one of those that would research everything. Like you could, somebody could tell him about something and he'd be like, wait, and he would research and look it up and he just went and listened to what other people said. So he wanted to make sure he knew the right thing. So he was very good about just doing his own research and not being manipulated or looking at certain things, you know, um, in the world. I knew he had smoked weed occasionally with a friend, you know, his friends, but we talked about anything and everything of drugs. And him and I were very close. So we had talked about, I knew on his dad's side of the family, they dealt with that. And so we had those very hard conversations. So, I mean, most people don't talk about those, but we did. And one thing I did not know is about fentanyl. I think the word's finally getting out there, but not to the extent we need it to be. It needs to be broadcasted just as much as COVID was. Within three months, we knew what to do, the three things, right? We knew wash your hands, social distancing, wear a mask. Yeah. Yep. But nobody's talking about this. He had experimented um, once, actually, um, with a friend, and an ambulance was called. And that was his ninth grade of high school. And I actually took him out of that school and, you know, kept him around, away from some of those friends that I knew were not the best influence at that time. So there was signs now looking back a little bit that, you know, he was dabbling. So I tried to be more and get him more involved because I noticed one of the things I wish I could have known is he was very involved in sports before and it just gradually was stopping. It was more gaming and different other things, you know. Um, and not as involved in other areas. So wish I would have known that that was something that he would have even thought about trying. You know, I think his uncle and other family members had even talked to him too. But I think what I'm learning is he thought he could trust his friend. And don't think the friend maliciously or intentionally did it. I don't think they even knew. So I think that's the hardest part is I mean, it could easily happen to myself. Like, I could say I have headache or cramps and somebody can hand me a pill. And it could cost me my life too. I wish my son would have Googled fentanyl maybe if, I, if he even knew what the word was. I don't know. I know as soon as I saw that on his autopsy, I was like, what's an acute fentanyl intoxication? I think this was his first time of my understanding. I think it was his first time of trying that of a pill. So I would say one pill killed him. It cost him his life from one mistake. Um, wasn't using any other things um, at all. But looking back, um, he got injured in football, I think, around the ninth grade. And I remember that hurt. And I remember him getting some pain meds, but I monitored them. But looking back now, maybe him thinking that would be okay if someone else offered it and not realizing it would, it was pure fentanyl. I would not say he was an addict. I would say he was a 16 year old kid that was experimenting, recreationally trying something because he was around friends that he thought he could be cool. And I think that's what killed him is he, 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 gave in to peer pressure, which who hasn't? I mean, I've drank with my friends and, you know, went to parties with my friends when I was at that age and nobody actually died from those times. I came home and I couldn't find him anywhere. Um, and I had his location and it said he was right there. I went to every room, couldn't find him, went to the garage, went to my room. Um, even called his uncle. He had just gotten back from deep sea fishing, you know, and I was like, well, did Kyle come over there? Normally it always, that's one of the things that's really hard about all of this. He's a very good communicator. Always told me, Hey, I'm going to walk down the road or I'm going to go over here. Like he was just always, he knew mom 
wanted to know, you know, just to be, you know, nice about it. And um, something in my spirit told me to, something in me told me to check outside. And the back door was locked. And I'm like, the lights were off. And if I had not turned the light on, actually opened that back door and stepped outside, I wouldn't have seen him. He was on the floor. And I immediately was like, what the, what's, Kyle, like, what's going on? And I immediately knew something was wrong. His phone wasn't immediately by him, um, but his uncle was calling him, trying to get a hold of him. So I immediately put on speakerphone and I'm calling 911 on mine and try to resuscitate him. Um, a lot of it's a blur afterwards. I do know that um, he wasn't moving. He wasn't he wasn't breathing. Um, I think uh, his uncle got there before the ambulance and he even brought Narcan over um, at the part that I don't know. And I don't know how long he was there. You know, um, I had talked to him earlier that afternoon and I was going to be home later that day and I was bringing dinner. It took four months for us to find out actually what it was. And so I'm thinking the whole time that being the hottest day of the year, maybe you had heart problems or, you know, and then just all these questions that go through your mind of what happened? What happened to him? What happened to my son? I saw fentanyl intoxication. Never knew what that was. Um, I Googled it. <laughs> maybe that's where my son got all the researching stuff because I, I don't believe it until I actually find out for myself of things. So maybe learn that part of, about me or learn from me. And I found out so much about fentanyl. Like it actually can be something actually good. Like it's used by doctors, you know, for example, during pregnancy, when you have an epidural or when somebody is in high severe pain, but it's monitored by a doctor. That's the legal kind I was finding out. And then I found out there's this illegal kind and that's what my son got a hold of from somebody else. It's, as I'm researching, is coming from China and Mexico through the borders. Having a, a counseling background, I was like, there has to be, I can't be the only one going through this. So of course, this is during COVID, nobody's out really out and about. So I just looked even on Facebook and started researching and I came across a group called uh, Families Against Fentanyl. And then I just started like, what, like, it was like a ripple effect and I just knew I was supposed to find some of these so I knew I wasn't alone. Like there's hundreds and thousands. It's actually the number one cause of death that nobody's talking about. It's more than COVID, more than gun violence, more than cancer, more than it's the number one cause of death from 18 to 45 is what I found out. I had never actually heard of it. Um, nothing at all. And then finding out that actually... It's been around since 2013 and it's just trickled up in 16. You know, it happened at first to, you know, addicts, which, you know, it was in heroin and, and crack and cocaine. And so it was happening to homeless and addicts at first. So nobody cared as much, you know, and I'll admit, maybe I was also thinking, okay, not my family, not me, not my, not, not anybody I know. And so I think 2016 is when I'm realizing and seeing all these other families still are dealing with this to this day. Like some people have not even gotten justice or been anything. Immediately when that detective saw that it was involved with drugs, he immediately, I felt like he acted like my son was an addict versus actually checking his phone, researching things, trying to see why a very healthy you know, athletic 16-year-old died. Um, I never really explained it. I actually had to call him because it was public on the um, website. I didn't know that. A friend had to call me. And I was like, it's public everywhere else, but the detective that was on my case can't even call me to tell me, like, this is how your son died? So it was very, very hard that... Um, and I voiced my opinion to the department about that. Yep, did. Because 
it was already a hard time. Like I shouldn't have to be researching and detective and like there should be someone coming alongside you to give you resources and, you know, groups or different things. So, um, of course now two years later, they're starting to kind of, you know, investigate maybe a little bit more, have some grief support groups. And, you know, I said, no matter who it is, have them contact me. I want to be the the liaison or advocate for this area because I don't want anybody to go through what I had to by myself. I think the biggest thing is we all think it'll never happen to us or to our child. And we just never know what double life that our kids or our loved ones or, I mean, even our spouse. Um or our brother and sister. We don't know what they're fighting behind doors. And one of the things I wish I could have told Kyle is that one pill is not going to make it better. I'm not sure why he decided to. I mean, I think what I'm hearing from most kids is they just kind of want to numb out a little bit or just kind of relax, you know, um, and I wish I could have told him that that pill would not make him feel that. Like it was just something temporary, but guess what? It wasn't. It's something that cost him his life. I wish I could have just, I wish I could have shook him, told him that there's other ways to cope. There's other ways to deal with whatever you're dealing with. I don't know what he was, I don't know what he was going through at that time, I guess. Like he just got back from a vacation. So I feel like he was in a good place. So I'm not sure why that day he thought. The only thing I, I heard is his friend didn't have weed and he would just wanted to smoke, I guess. And instead his friend had that pill. And so that pill cost him his life. <laughs>